what's up everyone welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek and this is my third and final breakdown video and in this video we're going to just break down just random shots from the two trailers the domestic and international ones and these are shots that just didn't fit in my previous two videos so if there is after we get to the end of this video if there's shots from the trailers that you didn't see me cover that you want to talk about feel free to let me know down in the comments what they are and we can definitely talk about them down there because there was so much so I'm sure I missed a couple things I try to go frame by frame but I didn't want to take like a million screenshots and go over every single tiny little thing but uh, but I, I took what I thought was fun would lead to fun conversations um, but if, if there's something I missed that you want to talk about like I said like let me know down below and we'll talk down there so for this video um, and again, I'll put a link to the breakdown video by the director of this film, Johannes Roberts. He did a breakdown of the first trailer, at least, and over on IGN, I think. So I'll put a link down that so you can hear his thoughts on these. And me, on these videos, I'm just kind of regurgitating. We already did one video where we talked about shots that look like they're inspired by the first Resident Evil video game. And we also did a video where we talked about shots that look like they're inspired from the second video game. So this is more of just like the leftovers, stuff that I think is like a blend of the two video games. So you'll see characters together in these shots that maybe aren't normally together in the video games like Chris and you know his sister here um, what you know Chris and Claire I have them up on screen so this first shot is Robbie uh, you know talking to Claire you know she grew up in an orphanage with Chris in Raccoon City it looks like Chris stayed behind became part of the police force and the special forces unit you know stars and she ran away from the orphanage because maybe she saw something that scared her and she, and she ran and maybe she tried to get her brother to go with her and he didn't believe her it looks like and so she ran off and had her own life lived on you know on the streets or you know it looks like she hitchhikes to get into town so definitely had a, maybe a tougher life and she's coming back and Chris still kind of doesn't believe her so she shows him a tape of Ben Bertolucci talking about the conspiracies and maybe it actually gets Chris's attention um, so yeah I, I think that's that's definitely different than the video games but uh, but it, it sounds intriguing to me. I think that it sounds nice because that sounds like a story, <laughs> you know, and uh, and in the previous Resident Evil movies, we didn't really get a lot of story. Um, we didn't get driving forces for motivation because half those movies had a character that had amnesia and didn't even know who she was. So it just didn't really lead you to stories. And this one, you know, we have a story here. So I'm, I'm into it. Uh, this shot here, I think, is from the orphanage, maybe. But the, or maybe it's from the police department. I can't really see. I think there's two people walking with guns in the background, so maybe it is. But there's a sign there that says, um, an umbrella is a shelter from the storm, which is funny and awesome um, because that's always umbrellas thing. You know, they have like, uh, you know, they talk about how life is their business or something like that. Like there's all these fun ads. And that's my thing. I, that's the one thing I thought they did good with marketing on the Paul Anderson movies was they did a lot of fake umbrella commercials. And I think that was very smart marketing. This movie doesn't seem to be doing that, but they still seem to be embracing some of that cheese in the, you know, the posters and some of the uh, decorations around Raccoon City and the sets of this movie. Um, so this shot here is Lisa Trevor. I don't know where she is. I can't, I mean, the fact that there's railings there um, going down the stairs, I feel like could be the orphanage. Because again, I don't, I don't know if stuff like that would be in the mansion. Um, because the mansion has like, I don't know, maybe cause there's, there is a, a wooden railing. So I guess this could be either one really. Um, so I want to we'll have to wait and see in the movie where this is set, but, uh, but yeah, the, the way the railing on the wall, the way it's attached, that seems more like a, a building and not so much like a, a house that was, you know, handmade with you know, wood and stuff. Uh, so, so that's why the, the background is making me think this could be the orphanage, but we have Lisa here, you know, doing a shush moment. And, uh, we saw this in. I think the the teaser image and now we get a full shot of it with the mask on the side of her head which is just really creepy looking like she she actually looks it looks good in this scene but I don't know if this is younger Lisa or if this is the version we see of her you know later like if this is present day and this is Claire running into her um, but apparently Claire knew her so I think they're gonna add even more tragedy to that character in this um, and this here I, I can't tell I think this might be Lisa because a little bit in her face, she looks like um, Marina Zippa, who's the, the actress playing Lisa. She looks a little bit like her in the face, but I also could be dead wrong about that. They could have cast someone who just could potentially play her mother. Um, so this could be Lisa's mother, Jessica. And the only reason I think that is because I think there's a file in the trailer, and I don't know if I have a screenshot of it, so if I do, we'll talk about it. But um, there's a, a the shot in the trailer 
where you see the journal and it says Lisa Trevor on the journal um, and it, like subject Lisa Trevor and it says you know we experimented at her on her and also on J um, you know J Trevor so that would be Jessica Trevor so um, yeah that's that's neat so it could be her mom um, or this could actually be Lisa before she climbs off the table and and you know wanders off or something so I don't know we'll see here you have a shot of the Ashford twins which is right out of Code Veronica. Actually, you see Alfred Ashford over there, the boy on the right. He's peeling the wings off of a dragonfly, um, which is something from the video game. So this shot here is an exact replica of that. The only addition is that there's a doctor in the background who we're going to find out is Dr. Birkin um, you know, in a later shot. I don't have it here, but, but that's Dr. Birkin in the background. They show it in another shot. And, uh, and yeah, so we have Dr. Birkin experimenting on kids including the ashfords now in the video games dr birkin and alexia ashford were more rivals um you know and so she was a young prodigy very smart girl and she wanted to take after her grandfather i believe who also was very smart and helped build umbrella as well so i don't know what the connection is here like how birkin and her could be in this room together um i don't know we'll see i mean if they set up alexia in this movie, which it seems like that's what they're doing with this shot, is that these are two other kids that were experimented on. Uh, or maybe Birkin is just talking to them, interviewing them, figuring them out. And maybe he says, yeah, I think they'll they'll be great. You know, they'll be, you know, we would love to have them as part of Umbrella or something. Or maybe he experiments on them and, and, then, and they tease Alexia the monster, the T. Veronica virus at the end of this movie. Who knows? <laughs> it's, 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 there's so many possibilities. But to fit this into this story is like, God dang, did you not have enough to work with when you made, when you combined the first two video games? Now we have Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica references in this. So that's what I'm a little worried about is I just didn't know there was going to be this much lore and, and hints in this movie. It seems like this director tried to fit it all in and that could be good or it could be very, very bad. We'll have to find out. But then we have this reference, which is a reference to Resident Evil 1, but it's Claire finding it. So there's this shot here of this, uh, window um because you can tell because like claire's like she's like in some, some kind of apartment or hotel room and someone wrote in blood itchy tasty on the wall i think it's the zombie that is about to break in i don't know why they would write that um obviously it's a reference to the video game so it's a meta reference but i don't know why the zombie would maybe maybe because i mean that's the thing in the in the video game is that they show in the journals is that when people are infected, they don't turn into a zombie right away, you know, typically, uh, unless they're bitten and they die from the bite. You know, if it's like a very fatal bite, they'll die and then they'll come back a little while later. But if the ones who were first infected when the outbreak happened at the Arclay mansion, they got sick for a couple days and their mind slowly deteriorated. So that's why in the journals, you'll see some of the people writing the journals and they'll say like, you know, I did this today and they're talking in full sentences and then the next day it's like uh, me am hungry and you're like what and then the final page will say itchy tasty you know so they, it's the deterioration of their brain so maybe that's why is this person is watching claire and writing itchy tasty and then their mind snaps finally after they spell that and then they go into full zombie mode so that is in keeping with the lore of the games not that that's important to me for the movie but it is in keeping with the lore of the games then we have this shot here which this kind of links up to the shot we saw in one of our previous videos where Chris was leaning up against a wall and he had a, like a bloody neck and stuff and his eye was bleeding like above his eye. This looks like it's taken from that part of the movie and he's reunited with Claire and he's like, we got to get out of here. So I'm thinking that's exactly what's happening is this is near the end of the movie, potentially, um, even though Claire doesn't look nearly as disheveled as he does. So she doesn't look like she's been through as much crap as he has. Um, but I, I'm thinking it's still, this is near the end of the movie. So yeah, but somehow she just still has like really great hair <laughs> and he, he looks like he's been, he got his butt kicked. Um, so yeah, that's cool because that's very code Veronica too, is like them working together, uh, you know, and rescuing each other. That's straight out of code Veronica. So that's why I wanted to put it here too. Um, and then we just got a cool image here of the, the logo. Like I just, I wanted to include this because normally I would make a whole video on it. Uh, typically if I was doing the Venom vlog, <laughs> I would make a whole video on the logo. But, uh, but here I just like, ah, it's a good place to put it at the end. Um, because it's the, it's very similar font to the video game, the, the Resident Evil, but the way they splash the blood in it looks really great. Um, yeah, I really like that. And currently there is a fan art contest going on 
and this is the information I'll put it up here and I'll also flash some of the images that I took off Instagram earlier because the Sony account and the talent house account were already sharing these and talent house they've worked with Sony before on the Venom movie and they did a Venom movie contest so if you're an artist out there and you want to try to get a, a poster in before the movie comes out this is your chance to use it you know to you to put your art uh, to the test and, and submit it because uh, they do use these posters. I mean, uh, two Venom movies have proven to me that these posters get shown around a lot, uh, definitely for marketing stuff. And when they do like premieres in different countries, they show the artwork off. And so it's a good way to get your art out there for sure. And I think there's a cash prize or something. It's not a lot, but you know, it's, it's, it's good. And uh, they pick really talented people. So if you are one, definitely, you know, go to go and, and submit your art for sure. So you let me know your thoughts down below, and I've talked long enough in this video as well. Um, even though I had less photos in this one, um, I still had a lot to say because, I mean, I, I'm getting more pumped. The more I broke down this you know, trailer in these three videos, the more excited I'm getting for the movie, but also the more nervous I'm getting because there is a lot. I mean, as a Resident Evil fan, there's so much uh, references, so many references in this, and so much of the lore, it seems like, that's being explored, but also while telling a, new, a slightly new story. So... Um, or at least the setup is new with Claire and stuff, but um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see when, obviously, when the movie comes out, but I'm intrigued. I know some people, like, out there are just hating on this. They, you know, everything they see, they're like, it's, it's bad, it's bad, whatever. And there are people out there that are just loving everything they see. I would say I'm I'm liking, I'm, I'm more positive than negative for sure, but there are some, some things I'm critical of with the CG, but I'm also just, like I said, I play Resident Evil for the story. Like, and not that it has the most amazing story, but I get really sucked into the world. Uh, like I said in a previous video, when I'm when stuff is rendering, and, it, you know, if when I'm rendering videos, I'll edit for like an hour or two and put all the photos in and put all the stuff in, and then it's rendering, and it might take like 30 minutes or an hour to render. I know if I go lay down in my bed and close my eyes, I'm going to fall asleep, uh, which is probably good for my health. I should do that. But some days I'm like, no, I want to start the next video as soon as this one's done. So to keep me awake and active, I'll pull out my Switch uh, and I'll play Resident Evil 1 Remake handheld, you know, like just here at my computer. And I just, I love Resident Evil so much. It's, it's such a fun world to visit and and involve myself with. And, uh, you know, the community, the fandom, I, I, I dip in and out of. Um, I, I think this doing this show and hitting 80 plus episodes is the most active I've ever been in a in a fandom of Resident Evil because normally I sit on the sidelines and just watch what people say about it and I don't interact as much but um, it's nice doing this and, and meeting a lot of you even the ones who disagree with me so if you do disagree with me on this movie if you don't have the excitement I have um, or you know if you're just hating on it for whatever reason and I'm not gonna label people as haters I, th I, I think I've learned my lesson with people who are critical of this movie you know, some of, I know all of you are coming from a good place. You're coming from a, a place of, of a fan and that's always good. And I shouldn't really ostracize a fan, uh, because they think differently than me. Um, so I think I, I got a good wake up call there with, with some of you out there who, who, you know, checked me. And I think that's good uh, for, for me in particular, um, and for conversation in general, I like talking about this stuff. And even if we don't agree on this movie, I think we would probably both agree on the games and how much we love the games. And so if that's the conversations we need to have, you know, in the comments, and then I'm all for focusing on the positive and the stuff we do agree on if you don't want to get into the stuff that we don't agree on. But if the stuff we don't agree on, I do want to hear your opinion still. So if you feel differently than I do on this, let me know down below. But for me, I had fun breaking this down over these three videos, and it's it's got me more excited for the movie than I was Um but I also wasn't negative on this movie ever. I just, I've, I'm, I have my concerns, I have my worries, but I, I've always been optimistic about this movie and I'm, I'm still optimistic. I maybe even a little more so uh, because I'm just intrigued on how they're gonna make all this work uh, or, or how badly it's gonna fall apart. I don't know, we'll see. But I won't know that until I see the final product. So you can bet your butt that on the day this comes out, November 24th, I'm off that day from work. I will be seeing it in the theater and I will get my review, my spoiler-free review, and my spoiler review up probably that weekend. So thank you so much. Hopefully we'll get more promotional stuff and more things for this movie between now and then. I'm sure we will. So whenever that stuff comes out, I will definitely cover it. I'm sorry I take long breaks on this channel, but without major information and without me wanting to watch Resident Evil Last Chapter or diving into the comics, I've just like, I'm taking a, you know, I, I do a lot. If you don't watch my main channel, 
I post like, you know, sometimes 10 or 12 videos a week on that channel and I work a full-time job and I was writing a novel up until recently. So I'm, I keep myself very busy. So that's why this channel just gets videos when I have time. Um, but you know, as we get closer to this movie, I'll try to put out more stuff for y'all that are Resident Evil related. So thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.